One of my most asked questions is how a particular camera model performs in low light. And while yes, some cameras are better than others, but any camera can perform well in a low light situation with the right approach and technique. So in today's video, I wanna teach you how to get sharp and in focus images with a small amount of noise in a low light situation. As digital noise robs us of sharpness, contrast and color depth, and it results in a muddy image. Now the goal is to get as much light onto our sensor rather than just lifting our ISO, which results in a lot more noise. And there is a few ways to achieve this and I'll be showing some examples from a recent night portrait shoot when I was in South Korea, as well as some other examples of night street photography, some landscapes shot at high apertures in low light, as well as some examples in a professional low light setting. So let's just jump right into it. The first point I wanna make is that low light is not no light, meaning that you always need at least one light source illuminating your subject. And there's definitely a misconception that if you go out and buy the latest Sony mirrorless camera, you'll be able to shoot under the stars, which is just simply not true. So these examples from the night portrait shoot in Korea, you can see that I'm always using a key light of some sort. For landscapes before or after sunset, I'm always shooting opposite to the setting or rising sun to use that last glow as a key light. Or at weddings, I love that intimate look without flash during the reception and speeches. And sometimes in certain venues, I'll use these small Amran 60 watt bicolor lights to add a small amount of fill to my subjects. Now these lights are pretty far away with a mini softbox and a grid, but you typically only need a small amount of fill light. So always look for at least one light source before you even start to compose your image. My second point is around gear and how less expensive camera gear can actually be better in low light. Let me explain. Larger megapixel sensors are worse in low light compared to lower megapixel sensors because with less pixels you get more pixel density resulting in less noise produced. But larger sensors like full frame or medium format have larger pixels than smaller sensors like APS-C or Micro Four Thirds. So cameras like my Sony a7 IV with its full frame 30 megapixel sensor performs better in low light with less noise than my Fujifilm X-T5 with its higher resolution 40 megapixel and smaller APS-C sensor. But I can still get some pretty good results on this little X-T5 in low light. And I'm actually quite surprised how well it performs at higher ISOs. I'll be doing a long-term review on this camera soon, so make sure you subscribe and keep an eye out for that video. Also, if you like how I've edited any of these photos, then check out my Lightroom presets, which are linked down below. My third and final tip, and definitely the most important, is your camera settings for exposing your image. And this is broken down into the classic exposure triangle of ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. And I wanna start with ISO, as I think learning what your max ISO for your camera is super important. So from trial and error, as well as communicating with other photographers, I know that 3200 ISO is the max ISO I'm comfortable shooting at on my Sony a7 IV. Now, sometimes I will push past that to say four or 5,000 ISO if I have to, but I know anything past 3200 ISO, my image will start to fall apart. For the Fujifilm X-T5, again, with trial and error, as well as communicating with other photographers, 
I've found that the max ISO I'm comfortable shooting at is 1250 ISO, but I have pushed past that to 3200 ISO and I'm pretty impressed with the low noise level from the X-T5 at higher ISOs. So the first thing you need to consider is what is your max ISO of the camera you are using and don't make the mistake of underexposing your image thinking that you can just lift the exposure in post. You'll get a lot more noise from that and you'll get a lot less noise from just exposing correctly by lifting your ISO. Next is shutter speed and finding the minimum shutter speed for the subject that you're photographing. When you lower your shutter speed, you let a lot more light into your sensor, but you need to know what your minimum shutter speed is for a sharp image depending on the situation and the subject. So there are some guidelines to follow like for sports, you'll need at least a shutter speed of 1 over 1000. For portraits, I like to stick to 1 over 250 and for anything else, I just use double my focal length. So if I'm using a 50 millimeter, I use 1 over 100 as my minimum shutter speed. But what happens when you reach your max ISO and your minimum shutter speed, what can you do about it? Well basically you can definitely go below your minimum shutter speed, but you need to make sure that nothing in your frame is moving to eliminate motion blur. And you have to avoid moving or shaking your camera to get a sharp image. So some of these examples of the night portraits I shot in Korea, I was at my max ISO and to expose correctly, I had to go below my minimum shutter speed of 1 over 250 and go as low as 1 over 125. And to maintain a sharp image, I asked the model Sultan to stay completely still, as well as maintaining a still and steady camera while hitting the shutter button. For landscapes shot at higher apertures or with nothing moving in the scene, you can shoot at very low shutter speeds if you use a tripod with a self timer to completely avoid your camera moving. But for me and my style of photography, I really do dislike tripods, so I rely on good inbuilt stabilization and just using a solid stance to get sharp photos at lower shutter speeds. And sometimes I go as low as 1 over 30 handheld. Most new IBIS systems and cameras are the only reason why I can do this. Lastly is aperture, which is the most creative decision when it comes to how you expose your image. And for low light, I use prime lenses as you get a lot more light at f1.4 than you do at f2.8 or f4 on a zoom lens. But sometimes I want to get the whole subject or the image in focus and sharp. So I have to close down the lens to say f5.6 or f8, and this heavily restricts the light reaching my sensor. So you really do need to make a decision on how important your aperture plays a role in your image and how much you're willing to sacrifice image quality to shoot at that aperture. All right guys, I wanna give you a quick speed round of bonus tips and avoid making mistakes that I see beginner and professional photographers making. Firstly, completely disregard your multimeter as it can fluctuate showing the image under or overexposed depending on the scene. It's best just to judge your exposure using your eye with the live view from the LCD or the viewfinder. Don't rely on fixing it in post. Lightroom's AI noise reduction is pretty good, but you still lose sharpness and color depth. Think of it as a backup or a quick fix if you make a mistake. Use your viewfinder for a third point of contact. This will make your camera a lot more stable when hitting that shutter button at lower shutter speeds. And finally, try to get a few different shots of the same composition with different camera settings and exposures. This is actually a mistake I made on a recent car shoot where I just wish I shot at a higher aperture to get the whole car in focus and use lower shutter speeds or a higher ISO to have a few different options to choose from. 
even if it did result in more noise that I could clean up later on. If you like how I've edited any of the photos in today's video, then check out my Lightroom presets, which are linked at the top of the description. And if this video has been helpful and provided you any value, make sure you hit that like button. And of course, subscribe for more photography content. And we'll see you next week. All right, bye.